NBC Nightly News. Teen suicide spiked in month after 13 Reasons Why debuted on Netflix. From the moment 13 Reasons Why debuted on Netflix in 2017, mental health professionals were alarmed, worried the show, which centers around a girl's suicide, would lead to copycats. Now, new published research says teen suicide spiked in the month after the show's release, a 28.9% increase among American kids ages 10 to 17, a 19-year high. And over the rest of the year, the study estimates there were 195 more suicides than would have been expected based on trends. But it's unclear if the kids who died by suicide actually watched 13 Reasons. Yes. That's why. Yeah. Also, researchers say the higher suicide rate was driven mostly by boys, yet the show's viewership skews heavily female. It's interesting. I don't know why they feel that Netflix would be yeah. a triggering mechanism for this. But at the same time, so it is May, which means mm -hmm. it's Mental Health Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. I think we need to just have more open conversations about the topic of suicide. Oh, absolutely. And Netflix responded. Let's hear the response. <laughs> Netflix is looking into the research, saying this is a critically important topic, and we have worked hard to ensure that we handle this sensitive issue responsibly. Netflix also pointed to another recent study, which found helpful effects for young adults who watched the show's entire second season. I call all these studies bullcrap. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to find any or prove causation. Yeah. But in some sense, you know, this does open up the con the door to conversation about mental health and suicide. And if you do watch the show in its entirety, you see that it's not, you know, it's really devastating. And I mean, I watched the show, so I thought that it kind of highlighted why you should not commit Really, you suicide. watched it? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, I'm I'm emo, so I like that sort of stuff. <laughs> But I think we just need to have more, op you know, more honest conversations about mental health oh, and suicide. Because yeah. I, I don't understand why it's so taboo to talk about it. Well, I, I don't think Netflix has triggered suicide among teens. They <laughs> see other things on the internet. I could point, there could be oh, fingers pointed at other true. things. out, Not Netflix. Or let's just talk about social media yeah, and mental health. Yeah, let's talk about so. social media and mental health, exactly. If you are having thoughts of suicide, call National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-8255. That's 1-800-273-TALK. Or go to speakingofsuicide.com forward slash resources for a list of additional resources. Please. Science Daily. Suicide attempts by self-poisoning have more than doubled in teens, young adults. Sex and age-specific increases in suicide attempts by self-poisoning in the United States among youth and youth adults from 2018, published in the Journal of Pediatrics, have evaluated the incidents and outcomes uh, from international suspected suicide self-poisoning in children and young adults ages 10 to 24 years from 2000 to 2018. In the 19-year time period of the study, there are more than 1.6 million intentional suspected self-suicide self-poisoning cases in youth and youth adults reported in the U.S., Two U.S. poison centers. More than 71%, 1.1 million of those were female. Previous research has shown that suicide is the second leading cause of death among young people aged 10 to 24 years. And while males die by suicide more frequently than the females, females attempt more than males. Self-poisoning is the most common way that someone attempts suicide and the third most common method of suicide in adolescents with higher rates in females. Data for this study were collected by the National Poison Data System, NPDS, from January 2000 and November 2018. Back to what we said. Jeez. Lots of things to say about this study, though. Yes. Because on one hand, though, you do need to be more watchful of males because males usually pick more violent methods of suicide mm -hmm. and you don't have a chance to kind of talk to them after a failed attempt. Because that's kind of happens with the women. Just because, again, I'm not trying to sound sexist, but just studies have shown women tend to choose less violent methods of suicide, like mm -hmm. pills. Mm -hmm. And then maybe this if they survive the attempt, this gives you a chance to talk to the females yeah. before they attempt again and are successful. But males, they'll just, just do it. Just knock it out. Yeah, because they tend to pick more violent methods, yeah, and... guns, etc. But so have conversations, get help. Yes. Talk to a therapist. Talk to your friends. Reach out to one each yes, one another. Reach out to people. People. Love we each all. Other. Everybody. I'm telling you. Okay, I don't want to speak in absolutes. I'm not a sick. 90% of people want to talk and hang out. Trust yeah. me. 
we're, they're, we're just all weird and we set up barriers for mental barriers for ourselves. It's super weird. I try to encourage people to break away from that stuff, but it's hard. Yeah. It's and hard. we've talked about it that it's definitely there's a rise among teens and it seems to be correlated with this social media. Mm -hmm. And it's just as we become more social, we need to remember that we need face to face interaction still. That's really important. Yes. For our mental health. For Yes. Okay, moving on. He used to be trans. Here's what he wants everyone to know. Very interesting. I, I lived eight years as a female named Laura Jensen after undergoing gender reassignment surgery in April of 1983. I started as a four-year-old kid in 1944. So I'm bringing to this conversation today 74 years of firsthand experience in some way, either living it or trying to deal with it or trying to recover from it. Um, and um, it's important, I think, to understand that everything that we've heard today is damaging to children. And I was damaged by this, and I have some very strong points of view. Very interesting. You won't hear this on a yeah. lot of podcasts, I'm just guaranteeing right now. Uh, next clip. Affirmation can be bad. I think it's important for us to realize that there is actually nothing good about affirming a young boy four years old like my grandma did me. The moment you affirm a child like my grandma did putting me in a purple chiffon dress and telling me how cute I was, how wonderful I looked, is the, at the very same moment that you're affirming that young person you're telling them there's something wrong with them, that you're not right. That is child abuse. We need to begin calling it what it is. It's not affirming a child. It's causing them to be depressed and anxious about who they are. And then we go on to inject hormone blockers into them and begin altering their body. Can we begin to understand today from these discussions how destructive this is to the psyche? It's no wonder they end up with separation anxiety and bipolar disorder, dissociative disorders, schizophrenia, and many other disorders that they want you to ignore. They want to block any child from having access to psychotherapy. Very interesting. Because yeah. he's, speci he's speaking specifically about children. Yeah. And and also, so stay with us. So yep, please. Let's listen to his whole thing, yep. and then we'll talk. Yep. Psychotherapy. The only reason that I'm able to speak to you today is because after 46 years of dealing with this issue, I was able to detransition in 1990 after I had extensive psychotherapy, the very same psychotherapy that they're trying to prevent people from having. Why? Because they don't want them to detransition. Because somebody like me puts a real bad mark on the idea that it's all good, because it isn't. I've recently written a book, Trans Life Survivors, that has the stories in them. It's painful to get these emails from people whose lives have been totally torn apart. Oh, that's in the clip. And now, manufacturing transgendered kids. We are manufacturing transgender kids. We are manufacturing their depression, their anxiety, and it's turned into a huge industry that people are profiting from after kids' lives are completely torn apart. The most vulnerable people in our society and adults are tearing their lives apart. It's really beyond my understanding why we're even having this discussion because it shouldn't be happening. I don't believe any doctor who injects a young person with hormone blockers should have a license to do so. I would prefer that they not have that ability. 
And I hope that people begin to realize this and begin to speak up about it. There is absolutely nothing good about affirming somebody in a cross-gender identity because it destroys their life. Very interesting. I have two more if you want to, unless you want to comment. No, no. I, I want, to, I want him through. to tell his whole story before we dissect it. Got We're it. manufacturing transgender kids. None of us should be a party to altering a kid's mind, his psyche, and sending them down the path where they're going to sit up here and say how their life was torn apart. And I, I'm the fortunate one. I got sober. I'm 33 years sober. I drank heavily and used cocaine as a way to try to mask the pain from having undergone the surgery as a way to cope with what grandma did in a purple dress that confused me. That when I was a little boy, four or five and six years old, I, I began to want to be affirmed. I began to enjoy being affirmed. I be, became addicted to the affirmation and the attention. I mean, if a kid wants to steal all of the attention out of the room, all they have to do is say, I am a transgender. They can suck the life out of a room in a heartbeat. And the focus is right on them. And they can get anything they want, can't they? Nobody calls them out. Nobody says, how do you, how'd you come to this conclusion? But we know how they came to the conclusion. Schools are giving them books. They're indoctrinating them. Parents are encouraging them. Online, they're in chat rooms. Chat rooms? Suggesting groups of kids become transgender. It's a fad. Yes, there are people who are autogynophilia, but there's also people who are deeply troubled. And then he goes into that last clip. Over 50% of the people that I've worked with, hundreds of people that I've worked with over the last 10 years, were sexually abused. Boys who were abused at a young age come to the conclusion that the only way they can prevent themselves from being sexually abused again is to cut off their genitalia and become females. In their mind, that is their defense mechanism for sexual abuse. Girls who are sexually abused want to be men as a way to fend off any intruder or sexual abuser because they will no longer be attractive for sexual abuse. Whether it's men or women, vast majority of them were abused as children. Many of them I sit with and talk with privately are in their 30s, 40s, and 50s before they're ever able for the first time to disclose they were sexually abused. It's too painful. I was sexually abused at nine years old multiple times by my uncle. When I told my parents I was sexually abused, they said, oh, Uncle Fred wouldn't do that. Wrong. They said I was a liar. So now I had worn a purple dress as a four-year-old. I had been sexually abused, and now I'm a liar. You know, it's not a real good way to start off life, and you're not only nine years old yet. There you go. Yeah. So Focusing on children. Yeah. Again, that's this that's and, his whole point. And what too. we want to say too, it's we don't we believe that there are people that are transgender. But there's been a trend recently of an increase in transgender cases and it and as he was saying, and we've kind of seen there's been a rush to get them on the hormone blockers, get them on pills. Mm. But they need therapy, which he also mentioned. Yeah. But when he was going through this, they Back when I cut this all out, but they were they just pushed surgery yeah. as a solution, just hormones and surgery to get you going, and that's what he's trying to. Yeah, and that's of, his concern that we need to actually explore the mental issues, make mm -hmm. sure there aren't underlying mental issues. Yep. And uh, to that, 
So I have that Psychology Today article. It's a little bit older. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was only from November of 2018, that transgender identity rise. So they've kind of identified this as this new phenomenon of uh, rapid onset gender dysphoria. And they are blaming it on social media. Um, And these people that they come out as trans after watching popular YouTubers, potentially. Mm -hmm. And they're saying this is prevalent among females, too, that females are uh, maybe more susceptible to social conditioning or something. Yeah. And so this is really interesting. And they're and the parents are saying that they didn't exhibit these symptoms before, and now they're all of a sudden coming out as transgender. And they also mention here that this rapid onset gender dysphoria could be maladaptive coping mechanisms, which is, again, what he said. If you have issues such as trauma, which mm-hmm. he had, and then that was never addressed, yep. and social maladjustments, et cetera. Uh, they also noticed that once you come out as trans, you're part of this trans community now. Yep. But now it's almost in conflict with the cis people. And, and they mentioned that as well, oh, that cis are almost the enemy. Uh. And, and that's Ooh. not healthy either because we want to. So, ha- that's bad. Yeah. We want to have good. Re- I mean, we want to support trans people. Yeah. And for that to happen, trans people also need to not view cis people as the enemy. Yeah. So. Jeez. Very Cut. interesting. It, it was a lot to unpack. Yeah. Listen to the clip. He... And, it, and again, we're not trying to be transphobic. Oh, absolutely we, not. We just want to make sure people are actually getting the help. Yes. And I, 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 Again, when honestly, my philosophy is if you're over the age of 18, people can do whatever they want. I'm telling you, I, me, yeah. I hone in on the kids part of this. You can, kids believe in tooth fairies and Santa Claus and all That's these things. True. You can convince kids of so many things. Yeah. They need to be adults. Let them make decisions as they're adults. Yeah, when let they them are mature. Adults, let them mature and then do whatever you want when you're an adult. Well, this yeah. also goes back to mental health and trans people have very high rates of suicide. And Extremely. That's- before and after mm-hmm. surgeries. It's, isn't it 40%? It's, some, it's a it's, really it's insane. crazy high number. It's yeah. alarming. Yeah. So it's it's really alarming that these people aren't getting the adequate help they need. Mm-hmm. And this kind of goes back to what we've been saying. Of we're always pushing the medication, the medication. But it all goes back to we need you know, therapy. Mm-hmm. The pill is, a pill is not going to fix your problems. Yeah. You have to fix your problems from within. And if if you have trauma, hormones, that's not going to fix. It's not going to fix anything. Suppress, maybe you can find suppressors for things, but you can never fix. Man, how many other podcasts provide you with so much information? HealthyTalkShow.com slash support. If you'd like to support the show, it's value for value. If this show provides you value, please provide some in whatever form you feel for however how much. HealthyTalkShow.com slash support has links to our PayPal and Amazon wish list with a bunch of cool things there. Yes, your support is invaluable. Yes. And that's why we get to talk about topics like this. Yes, from you guys. Being taken off of the internet. Yes. Thank you so much for watching. For more Healthy Talk Show, please consider subscribing to our podcast over at healthytalkshow.com slash subscribe. It's free. Twitter and Instagram at Healthy Talk Show drop the W. We record the podcast live Mondays at eight PM Pacific Standard Time over at healthytalkshow.com slash live. Love and light.